In science, it's taught that the atmosphere has an electric potential gradient with a vertical electric field of about 100 volts per meter. So if someone was a little over 6 foot tall, there would be an electrical potential difference of about 200 volts between the ground and the top of their head. The air being positive and the ground being negative. So I set up an experiment to see what can be detected in this electric field. The way I have this experiment set up is first I have a ground then wired through an electric meter and out to a conductor on this non-conductive pole. When the conductor is raised, it will be traveling through the vertical electric field in the air and we'll see what kind of electric we can detect on the meter. The black negative test probe from the meter is connected to the earth ground and the red positive is connected up to the conductor. So when the conductor is raised up from the ground, a small current should flow from the earth ground through the meter and out to the conductor. This is just a cheap meter I got from Harbor Freight quite a few years ago. It's set on millivolts. Turn it on. I have it neutralized on the ground and I'll raise it up. And it showed like a charge on it to go up. And I'll let it back down. And it showed a little charge on to come down too. I'll neutralize it on the ground again. I drew out this experiment to try to explain a little better. The ground is considered to be negatively charged and the air positive. And for every one meter above, there's a 100 volt potential difference. And as you go greater height, the potential difference gets greater. The way this meter operates on DC is that when you have the polarities of what you're testing oriented correctly for the meter, it will read a plain positive number. If the DC polarities are connected backwards, a negative sign will appear before the number. DC electric flows from the negative to the positive. So if the ground is negative and the air is positive and I raise this conductor in the air, the current is going to want to flow from the ground up to the conductor in the air and it should register correctly on the meter. But if the current was flowing the other way, you'd see a negative sign in front of the number. So when the conductor is up in the air and the current has stopped flowing, it would be like a charge capacitor at a higher voltage potential up here than if it was down here. And when you lower the conductor back down here again, where the potential difference is different, the excess charge that was up in the conductor is now going to want to flow backwards back into the ground. And that's when you'll see that negative sign in front of the number. Raise her up. And show the charge one to go up again. Now let her back down. And show the charge coming down. Now I'll neutralize it again. Go back up again. And let it back down. And neutralize it. Up. And now down. Neutralize it. 
lays it out on the ground. It's just a tiny bit, but there is a charge going up. And I let it back down. Show the charge wants to come down. It'll neutralize it on the ground. Up. I'm going to leave it up there a little bit longer this time to get the charge up there. Now let it come back down. Yeah, so it is showing there's a electric field there and the charge wants to travel up and down. Although the meter used didn't register hundreds of volts, more sensitive equipment would have been needed for that. There was detection in the millivolt range and an indication of a tiny charge that wanted to move up and down as they moved that conductor up and down. The electricity in the experiment out there is different than the electricity I'm receiving in my antenna power experiment that you see going on behind me. My antenna energy is from man-made EM waves that produce an AC current between the antenna and the ground. In the experiment outside, we're detecting a natural DC potential difference that exists between the air and the ground. It's like a big capacitor, and with a higher elevation, you get a higher electrical potential difference. There have been experiments in the past where people have used towers and balloons to collect thousands and thousands of volts to try to use it as a power source. And there are still some people today who try to attempt to do that. And it's pretty interesting. I hope my little experiment enlightened you a little bit and sparked some creativity. Thanks for watching.